Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, back on Guitargate, and uh, Taylor Maines from Destin, Florida. Howdy, Taylor. Thanks for being a lifetime member. Wants some Phil Collins, I Wish It Would Rain. He says, this is by far one of my favorite songs of all time. It's what introduced me to Eric Clapton. My dad gave me the greatest hits album when I was 12. Still makes me cry to the day. Um, this is what music is all about. This live version doesn't have Clapton, but man, it's still amazing. Would love to see you break this down. I've loved this song, but I've never known the why. All the best, Taylor. Taylor, my pleasure. I've heard this song a million times. I don't think I've ever learned it. I don't remember sounding terribly complicated. Let's see if we can't break it down for you. So, the tuning is a little off. I am in tune. This is just a little bit sharp. So, it's G major, but it's really like, it's not quite G sharp. It's like, like, not there, but right there. But the point is, you got G major, one chord. Now, the bass goes down a half step. Now, whenever the bass goes down a half step, I want you to remember this forever. Assume it's the third of your five chord. Make that your first guess, right? And that's exactly what it is. It's D first inversion, right? So you got a D major triad, F sharp is on top, put it in the bass. But I like to keep my triadic movement uniform on the same strings going down. Then it goes down to your sixth chord, E minor or E minor 7. You want to keep that D in it. And then it walks up. So it's. Right? Now, this little lead part up here sounds like it's just G major. Starts off with the lead, which is so epic. Going to that B. So again, it's not, it's not C, it's not B, it's, it's right under there. So it's really like... like Now you can do this in a few different places, but really what's happening here is is almost like uh, you're doing it as if it's E minor. Okay, so in E minor, this would be four into five. Then it goes. It's a very minor phrasing. Now remember the key of G major and E minor are the same. So you could look at this as Four into five, flat three, one in E minor, or two into three, two, one, six in um, in G major. Same stuff. Same things, different octave. Let's see if it does the same. Love that. Very Gilmore, bending through the root. Again, if you're thinking E, right? Now, just real quick, why this works. That B note, that is the major third of G. When it descends to D over F sharp, the focus note is the A. 
Okay, so that is the fifth of D major, okay? And then when it goes to the, ends on the E, that is the root of E. So again, third of G, fifth of D, root of E. That's the story. Love the bass. Who's playing bass? Yeah, I'm kind of pulling it up in tune. Love that bass walk up. So your head is Okay, so again, the tuning is off, but I'm pretty sure that's one to a two, a hard two, I mean a major two, not minor, to a four, back to one. Now, um, so you kind of modulate for a second, but you just got to get the, get that sound in your head when you're like, like just that little jump one step forward but it sounds a little brighter think about a major two back down love the lead over everything Then Nathan East, five string. So hard to tell. So it's really clear here that that the focus, the focus is E minor. All these licks that, that just the way that you determine whether or not your phrasing is major or minor in your relative major and minor scales is wherever you're resolving. So like if I'm here in this scale here, the one we all know and love. If I'm resolving on E's and I'm like, right? It makes me sound like E is my resolution point. But E minor is also G major. So if I was going like, like, like that would be resolving to G. Not really hearing a lot of that. So even though it's the same scale, this is what gets people messed up with modes, right? Because this major and minor is really, they're really two different modes, but it's the same collection of notes. It's just where you put the emphasis. So even though this song is G, D over F sharp, E minor, 
all the riffs are coming from that E minor um, center line, if you will. And so that's what you got to kind of understand about the phrasing that you're hearing. That, that. Right? G, F sharp, E, D, E. You can, it's clearly landing on that E. Well, that video wasn't in sync, was it? What a huge song. That, that, that. Love that little motif. That. Now again, if you were to... That'd be very G-centered. But the fact it's... Ending on that E, it's very E minor center. Who's this for? Taylor Mains. Taylor, thanks for being a member at Guitargate. Um, here is here's the key takeaway. Huge song. When I think of Phil Collins, I think of huge stadium songs. So big arrangements, simple chord changes, huge singing, simple melodies, right? Great orchestration and just incredible players. Just just built to be big. Not intricate, right? Just huge, big pieces that fit perfectly together in a huge presentation. That's what I think of Phil Collins. So, the things to remember in here. G, D over F sharp. Whenever your bass goes a half step down, I want you to forever think that that, that seventh degree is the third of your five chord. Remember it forever. Make it be your first guess, okay? And then, I just check. Sometimes these things just go out. So, one, five, first inversion, right? So, five over your major seventh, and then your sixth chord, minor. And now it's got a four to a five, over and over again. You can play a bunch of different inversions. But then, in that middle part, a two. Now, I couldn't hear really well. The bass might have stayed on G, right? And just, and done like an A over G thing, like a two over one, because it was really, really floaty. But I'm, but what I'm really listening for is this, that, that uh, B to C sharp, is that in there? So we're gonna, we'll go back and check that, but I really think that's the note that stands out. It's, like I said, it's a hard two. Um, and then besides that, all your leads come from E minor, which of course is the relative minor to G major. Um, and the reason you make one focus over the other is just taste, right? But I think it kind of lends itself to the vibe here to kind of do those big minor style bends, those bluesy Gilmore style bends over this instead of resolving to your Gs. It just sounds more epic, more stadium centered, which of course, it's where Phil Collins wants to be, in the stadium. That's it, my friends. Uh, I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. If you find this interesting, please hit subscribe. For those of you that are guitar players out there, would like to learn this systematic approach to the fretboard, how the theory and the chords and the melodies all work in a step-by-step -step way, I'd love you to be one of my students online. You, get to, uh, you click the first link in the description. It's called GuitarGate. And as a thank you, just like Taylor, you get to pick what comes next here on YouTube. It's how you support the channel. I don't do sponsored videos or any pay-to-play stuff. 
And so um, those, those of you that are Guitar Gate subscribers make the world go round. That's it. Keep the guitar in your hands. I'll see you very soon. Cheers.